Dan, good to see you. Good, Doug, good to see you. I right. have a nice, nice view, good space here. I appreciate you taking time to, uh, to chat with us today. Just would like to talk to you about what your grad students or, or research students are using high-level synthesis for. We have been using our own internally developed tools for about a decade that are based on data flow graph techniques uh, to allow us to do rapid uh, architecture trade-offs. And it's great to see that uh, now we have access to more mature and robust tools. So that is great for us. Uh, we have been using uh, this methodology for a number of applications, uh, including uh, baseband communications, signal processing uh, with uh, multi-antenna capabilities, uh, cognitive radio, spec wideband spectrum sensing, and a uh, variety of communications uh, uh, use cases. Uh, then we also use them for uh, highly parallel data processing for neuroscience, and also translation to therapy for implantable medical devices for uh, brain analytics. And uh, that's where we require ultra low power. Uh, so design optimization is very important. On the other end of things, we also use it for very high performance, latency sensitive uh, radar emulation application. So there's a wide range of uh, interesting applications where this uh, high-level synthesis uh, does uh, help greatly improve design productivity and uh, overall uh, design optimization. Okay, good. Yeah, that, that's quite a few applications. That's what we're seeing in the marketplace as well. So you, you mentioned medical for, is that implanted devices? Uh, yes, yeah, so we have uh, both uh, science and uh, therapeutics uh, and translational neuroscience in between. So we are looking at uh, a large number for the science applications, uh, more than 100 uh, channels of uh, brain recordings, and then to be able to look into that data and decide uh, what's interesting, really, that uh, translates into uh, successful uh, therapies. And then uh, making uh, these implementations extremely low power at the microwatt levels that would be suitable for uh, long battery longevity and eventually make it into implantable devices. Okay, I see. So power is incredibly important. Right. So using high-level synthesis, you can, you can do trade-offs with different architectures to investigate which one has the lowest power? Yes. Uh, trade-offs are important across the board uh, to make sure that we are able to meet the requirements for power and also area. And also for emulation, uh, we, we like to do uh, rapid prototyping and be able to emulate algorithms before we make a commitment for implementation. And oftentimes it turns out that the architecture that you emulate on an FPGA, for example, is a different architecture than whatever happens to be your ASIC uh, node. And so you would be able to, you need that capability to have equivalent performance and functionality, but have different architectures. The one that you use to rapidly emulate your digital system and the one that you end up implementing in your technology of choice and be able to target different technologies. So that uh, gives you the ability to uh, explore those trade-offs and make the right decisions. Excellent. So when, when your research students are working on this, do they work in teams so that maybe a systems focused student will work in a team with one of your more implementation focused students so that they can do the trade-offs together? Uh, that is the right way to think and that's what we try to do as well, to train students to blur the boundaries of traditional knowledge and training in systems and signal processing versus hardware and they uh, benefit greatly from uh, working together where they can uh, sit together and jointly optimize uh, all aspects across from the application down to the hardware implementation because in the end everything starts and ends with the user and the end application so systems students should be able to freely enter 
classroom and do research without needing to worry too much about hardware details, knowing that they would quickly learn about uh, hardware cost of their algorithms and be able to make adjustments uh, to uh, address those hardware sensitivities. But it's also valuable experience for hardware designers who then learn that a lot more gains can be achieved at the system level by smart selection of algorithms. And uh, it really helps us to bring communities together to uh, jointly optimize uh, full vertical stack from algorithms to architectures down to uh, circuits. So, Dan, do, you, do your students find that coding at C++ System C gives them much more control over the algorithm as a whole than if they wrote the register transfer level? Uh, system students definitely do. Uh, they find that a higher level description gives them more control. There is also a translation to C++ where typically C++ is used for accelerated simulations for more complex algorithms. However, we do train students at uh, all levels because you should be able to intervene with the outcomes from the tools and uh, make improvements at various levels. So for example, for the senior undergraduate uh, class, we teach them layout of individual standard cells as well as uh, using the standard cells and just doing a little bit of manual routing and metal layers for simple logic blocks to appreciate that level of uh, abstraction. And then we come to entry level graduate student course, which is uh, RTL level, and students learn, I don't need to do all that uh, manual layout, I can just write RTL and uh, layout pops out for me. That's a big relief. But then they understand if they need to create some custom layout cells and include that as a macro, uh, that is uh, what they do. And then we come to the uh, high level synthesis and VLSI signal processing course where students learn we don't need to write RTL, we can just get it generated from high level synthesis. But again, you need to be able to interpret those results. Did I get the right RTL? Do I want to trust the tool too much or would like to make some improvements at that level? So I think uh, definitely higher level of abstraction gives you more control, but you do need to have a good amount of knowledge uh, at every layer of translation to understand the results and be confident about the overall uh, outcome. That's interesting. So that's an extremely comprehensive uh, training and education program. But the high-level synthesis, as, as you said, gives the systems guys the ability to speak with those guys that are steeped in implementation to make sure that the cost of implementation, implementing that architecture is, is as low as possible, right? And I think high-level synthesis really tracks the change in uh, design methodology that's uh, necessary to track the uh, uh, semiconductor industry. Just like in the mid-80s, there was a translation from uh, custom layout to standard cell-based layout to bring big productivity uh, gains. And nowadays, uh, it uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do everything uh, at a standard cell level, but we are in the era of IP-driven uh, SOC design, where we are looking into the number of different IPs and accelerators and uh, CPU and GPU, various kinds of blocks, where really at uh, SOC design, we are looking into the integration of uh, different IP blocks and high-level synthesis certainly is a design methodology that supports that kind of a design methodology that is more like a coarser granularity uh, blocks and more like a system, more elaborate system functions that are integrated uh, in, within the IP. Yeah, we're looking forward to a time when, when much of the IP is actually written at C++ system C level so that you can do these trade-offs, you can put that IP together and do even higher level trade-offs for the entire architecture. That's right, yeah. We also look into different uh, architecture trade-offs and uh, making even simple changes uh, such as uh, adding more levels of concurrency in accelerators. Uh, definitely is uh, better facilitated with high-level synthesis because 
making even simple change such as adding uh, concurrency would uh, be very uh, uh, burdensome at uh, RTL uh, level to make sure that you have all the bits lined up, uh, that everything is still bit through cycle accurate and uh, high level synthesis allows you to not really have to worry about those low level details and really focus on the productivity and architecture space and uh, it's no longer just uh, meeting timing is enough but uh, really presenting multiple architectures in the context of the system design to see which ones uh, end up uh, uh, at, uh, in, in the final solution. Very good. Well, thank you, Dan. This has been a very good discussion. You have a lot of insights into how to use high-level synthesis, and I appreciate this. My, my pleasure. Thank you.